hey guys, Kiko here for another q and I'm here in this beautiful house in Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee. And in this house, we recorded all the guitars and we did pre-production as well for the new Megadeth album. So yeah, great memories here, great memories. So now it's time for rehearsals and we soon will be going on tour in North America. So pretty excited for that. So let's do this and let me answer some questions. So before that, subscribe to the channel and you know, I love doing this, so send me more questions. Just write down below here the questions and I will be doing these Q and A's during the tour. So first question here from Mateus Costa. He's asking me if I would do vlogs during the tour. Well, I will try my best, you know, to film, to show a little bit the backstage, what's happening, what happens uh, before we go on stage. But the focus, of course, is the shows, um, uh, you know, the, I mean, the whole thing that we have to do, like sound check, practicing, meetings, and a lot of, and traveling, of course. And uh, so, it's, it's, the days are quite busy, so it's hard to dedicate time for uh, do vlogs, but I will try my best to film here and there and show you guys uh, during the tour some nice videos. All right, so let's go for the second question. This one is from Leonardo Santos. Leonardo, what are some of the bad habits you've had when you were a beginner? How did you recognize these habits? these bad habits and what did you do to get rid of them do you still have any of any bad habit at all um, i think if you ask my mother my sister my wife they they would give you a list of kiko's bad habits <laughs> i guess right but i mean i think the trick is just ha it's just to have more good habits than the bad habits and just to minimize the bad habits throughout life. But if you are asking about guitar or learning music specifically, um, let me think. I One thing that comes to mind right now is like, um, I, I was never into learning melodies, you know, like learning songs like classical, classical pieces or the solo from Charlie Parker, the Donna Lee, whatever, you know, those solos and transcribing them. I was never into, I didn't have the, I was not patient enough, you know, uh, to, to write down, to transcribe or to memorize all those notes. And now I feel like when, as a composer writing songs, I should know more uh, melodies and themes from the songs that, you know, that everybody, have been listening throughout the centuries, you know, mainly the classical stuff, the classical pieces. So maybe at some point I will break this bad habit and have and give some time to learn those um, amazing melodies from the classical composers mainly, but also the improvisers um, or pieces from uh, Jacob de Bandolin or some other Brazilian uh, composers as well. Yeah, maybe one day. Maybe one day. Also, also, I do also have, you know, we know the bad habits. That's the thing. We know that we could read uh, like a Nobel Prize book, but we don't. And when we stay there reading like comments of random people, right? Instead of getting a, like a, a, like a well-known book and reading a, a book and then we read stuff, whatever. So. Uh, you know, it, we know it's a bad habit and we all do, so, yeah, so, also I'm not reading any book now and I'm reading all the comments from Instagram, so, you know, anyways, we should change that. Uh, next one is from Leval Allen. At what age did you realize that you have found your own musical style? Is this something that musicians constantly develop? Yes. Yes. You know why? Because we are constantly changing. So if you are always changing, our style will change as well. But let me finish your question. 
Is this something that musicians constantly develop or do they find their voice and stick to it till the end? It might be that some, some artists, they, right at the beginning, they do something that get well accepted and they think, wow, that's cool. People like that, so I might stick with this, you know? And some other artists, they might, you, you might need more time to find who you are, you know? So it doesn't matter. In the end, it doesn't matter. What really matters is like, you have to go to different sources all the time. So you listen to classical music, to jazz, to, you know, Steve Haybogan, Steve Weiss, Steve Morse, you know, all the Steve's, you know, like Steve Lukather, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, then the John Petrucci, Joe Giori, Joe Pass, um, I don't know, like Hendrix and Rich Blackmore. You start listening to all those guitar players, uh, Jeff Beck, and then Beethoven, Dvorak, Chopin, uh, Pierre Boulez, Frank Zappa, uh, Bob Marley, I don't know, just like U2, Coldplay. So you start listening to a lot of stuff, good music, and and then of course you have your taste for all the things. Maybe 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 you like skateboarding, maybe you like surfing, maybe you like uh, science fiction books, maybe you like technology, you know, sailing. I don't know. So you you start combining what you like, and th just let the the good things that connect with you to sit and stay, right? So after a few years, this mix of your musical taste, the things that you practice and you, you study, uh, the, also your childhood, the music that you listen to at home, um, the stuff that you lived in, in, in your teenager years, whatever, this, all this will combine into something that is very unique and that's you, right? So don't worry about it, just keep doing, just, just go for, uh, just research, just open your mind and just you know, uh, try to absorb everything, and then, and then throughout the years, the good stuff, the good stuff that is that is good for you, that will stay, and then this will become your identity, and then you, you are different than me, and then of course, if you subscribe to the channel, and then you share this video, more people will will watch, and all those thousands of people watching here, they're all different from each other and then everybody has a unique combinations of those things. So one thing that is very important is like to say no to things, you know? Maybe there's a trend that you think that you should know how to play that or have to listen to this kind of music, but if you don't like it, you don't need to do it, you know? So like this, you start shaping who you are. So that's very important to learn how to, to say no or, you know, just to avoid stuff that it, doesn't connect to you, right? So here we go. This one for Marcos Vinicius. He's asking me uh, if me or my wife, if we teach our kids music. And actually we tried, <laughs> but it didn't really work. So um, my older daughter, she goes to the Pop and Jazz Conservatory in Helsinki to learn like the first chords and acoustic guitar. And I think they have way better teachers uh, there than myself so yeah um, but of course it's super cool when we we play something then we try to do something but it, it doesn't you know it, it it doesn't work it didn't work so far at least so the next question here from Senor Dean I think his name is like Mr. Diminished Senor Dean how did you know guitar and music was the thing you wanted to pursue in life do you ever second guess that choice of course, of course, because I was not sure uh, that I wanted to be a, a professional musician. So one thing is to play guitar every day and be very passionate about music, but deciding to become a professional musician is a pretty difficult decision. And back in the days, in the 90s when I did, I, I think it was, was a hard thing to, to decide. So I did almost two years of biology university, and then, then I, started, I started to travel more, uh, to tour, and I remember going to Europe to record the first Angra album, Angels Cry. 
So then, then it was hard to come back to the biology university. But after I quit and I left uh, the university, I always, I, I, for years, I was thinking I should go back. I should. I, I need to finish the biology university. It's important for me to have a university. I was always thinking about that. Maybe for the next, you know, until I was 27, something like that. I thought one day I would go back to the university. But of course, the second album came, the next tour came, you know, then like whatever, guitar clinics and uh, things start happening in music. So one day the idea of going back to the university just like faded out, you know. But yes, I think it's very natural to to have this doubt of being a professional musician. But I, I believe that we live in a, an amazing time, the Renaissance 2.0, and then uh, like it's the best moment for all the creators. So you have so many opportunities, you have so many ways to monetize your art. So you don't need uh, you know anyone to decide, right? You don't have this wall, this door that you have to find who owns the key for that door, you know, to convince somebody that you're good. You just start doing it, posting, doing your art, and there's so many tools that you can, you have, you know, to monetize via YouTube, Twitch, uh, having a merch store, playing live, whatever. So all, all the possibilities we, we have now. So come on. Nowadays, I believe you should you should do what you love and that's it, you know? But it's a hard decision and a lot of people are afraid of, uh, you know, taking the hard, the hard, you know, deciding, taking the hard decision. A lot of people are afraid of that and then they even compromise their entire life because of this fear. So, yeah. So nowadays, man, just if you love music, just go for it, you know? That's my advice here. All right, so next one, I think it was good, right? So let's see another, um, okay, this one, Andres Sete Cordas, and Seven String Andrew, that's the name of my friend here from Brazil. So how do you practice your movements on stage to walk and run while playing solos and riffs? Well, you just get your guitar, put your sneakers and run for an hour and practice. Just kidding. Um, actually, the best way to practice would be playing, just stand while playing at home, just, you know, play standing up, you know, see how it feels. But also when you have to rehearse with the band. So when you're rehearsing with the band, you can, you know, start to think how you, you will act on stage. But actually for me, it's a very natural thing. I just go on stage and start, it's just the music and then you just start improvising some movements and then you figure out like, okay, I like that, I don't like this, I will do this. And then the good stuff you try to memorize. And after a while, you're, you're able to, to know, okay, the first verse of that song, that's what I'm gonna do. The chorus, that's what I'm gonna do. And then you're aware of all the movements you do in a show. Yeah, believe it or not. And of course, you can study that. You can look to other artists, you know, and it doesn't need to be guitar players, you know, other artists, what they do, and then see what you think is cool and what fits to your personality. And then you can try to do some stuff as well. Yeah. But I mean, I never really practice like in front of a mirror or something like that. It's not my thing. But if you feel like you want to practice in front of a mirror, why not? You know, I think maybe it's the the professional way of doing that. For me, it's something very natural. I just, uh, after I watch some videos and I think about, and I try to map the entire show, what I'm gonna do, yeah. Good stuff, right? So I think we're good. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel, send me more questions and see you in the next video.